Hi, I'm Harry Wright, and you're watching Autism 101. I'm an autistic comedian, and every week in UK lockdown, or most weeks anyway, I'll be exploring a different aspect of life with autism. So this week, masks become mandatory in UK shops and public spaces. Now obviously I fully support wearing masks, it's really important, everyone's got to do it, everyone's got to stop that stupid crap we're doing in America with people protesting about it. But sometimes it can be a bit of a sensory nightmare for autistic people, you know, having something round your ears, elastic, pinging against you is horrible. However, there are some common mask-based situations where if you're autistic, you can have quite a bit of fun. Let me show you what you can get away with. The first situation is on the tube. So, if you do what I do, and wear a mask that's big and baggy, so that it doesn't clip against your face in a horrible way, you can get confused with a hijacker. This happened to me. This is what happened. Ticket collector came round. Tickets, please. And I managed to do what I could. I've got my water pistol out and went, this is a hijack. But unfortunately for me, the ticket collector was autistic as well. So he did exactly what I would do in that situation. And he said, who the fuck is Jack? Show me your ticket. The second time you might have to wear a mask is in Costa. Um, I don't like wearing a mask in Costa because I can't hear the, I can't hear what the staff are saying because they're wearing masks too. And they can't hear me, hear me give my order, so I have to shout and it's a bit of a mess. So I've devised um, my own invention where you can attach a loudspeaker to your mask and you can order as loudly as possible through a loud hailer so it's impossible to ever get confused. You might sound a bit like a football mum, but that's who lives in my area anyway, so I think I fit in quite nicely. Northwest London representing the yummy mummies always and forever. Another situation in the barbers. Now this can be a real sensory mess for autistic people. A lot of us hate having our hair cut. The feeling of the clippers and the razor against us as we sort of have our head forced back with someone you don't, don't really know doing it to you. And you're having to make small talk and it's noisy. Oh, it's horrible. That's why I do my own. Like, even though I look like a fashion disaster, I'm prepared to suffer for my art at this point. Um, but again, I've invented my own unique mask. If you put a barber's robe all the way over your body, you don't have to worry. It acts as a mask and as a sensory block both at the same time. Unfortunately, I did get thrown out of the barbers for doing that, but that's his loss. I have to wear a mask at work at the moment. I'm back in the office. And I found, if you don't want to go to a meeting, put a mask over your eyes, say you missed the email. So here we are. Why didn't you go to a meeting? Sorry, didn't see the email. Can't get away with it. That's disability discrimination if they try and challenge me on it. I find pubs very noisy and oppressive sometimes, particularly when there's big groups of football fans in, sort of yelling at the TV, a bit drunk. Um, not really my thing. I like to sit quietly on my own and have a beer in peace and do the crossword because I'm that sad. But I, again, uh, an invention of my own. Um, this mask attaches onto your headphones so you can wear your headphones around your head and not have to listen to them. And there's also a straw coming out of it. So you can do a bit of the environment by using a paper straw and also have a moment of peace and quiet at the same time. And we've got some Birmingham City fans in there. I'm um, not sure what they're doing in London, but they're definitely the worst of all. Those some common mask-based situations. Let me know if you try those out and how they go for you. They've definitely gone well for me. Definitely. Something else is happening for me. I'm going back home to Yorkshire again in a couple of weeks. Looking forward to being back. But I'm not looking forward to seeing some of the more, more reactionary attitudes towards Yorkshire that people have. Now, it's a lovely place. I do love it. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes people think that Yorkshire is all there is to the world. It literally has the nickname God's Own Country. That's God's own country, but the town I grew up had bargain booze next door to the job centre. I'm not sure you're doing that right. One guy in the town where I grew up has a sign in his garden. It says, God's own country, pointing inwards. And then outside it just says, Lancashire. I really don't think everywhere you dislike can just be categorised as Lancashire. <laughs> That's not how it works. Also, Dad, take that down or the council are going to get you done. Yeah, he really needs to get rid of that. But maybe he's right though, because I think a Yorkshire god would actually work very well. Now, I should probably have a flat cap for this bit, rather than my usual gay boy snapback. In case you haven't seen it, become a little cult item in its own right, a little cult garment. But, for all my worries about Yorkshire, and all that I've complained about it over the years, I know I'm a true Yorkshire man now, because I am too cheap to pay 7 99 for a flat cap, so I'm going to have to use this. So this is what I think a Yorkshire God might look like. You can use your artistic imagination to picture me in a flat cap with a whippet on a lead, if you like. In the beginning, there were out. And God said, let there be light. But light didn't work. So God said to Janet, that's why. He said, he didn't create her, she's just always bloody there. He said, here, get a man in. Here, love, here, love, get a man in. I ain't fixing it, Miss Anne. And that was why Adam was invented, to come round and fix light. And when God set eyes upon Adam for the first time, clad in naught but a fig leaf, he said, He has said you some sort of shirtlifter. Why a woman was created to avoid shirtlifters. 
See, it's quite odd. I know my accent isn't great, but it sounds more Jamaican. But I've never really been very good at like Yorkshire accent because I'm not from there originally. My family are from London and moved up north. And when, once when I was little, little boy in a Yorkshire school with other Yorkshire children, we for our school play, we had to read out a piece of poetry as part in one scene that required someone with a Yorkshire accent. Now, I obviously didn't have the accent, but I was also the best reader in my class, so I got made to do it. I tried so hard to put the accent on this little eight-year-old boy going, Now then, now then, love, now then. But like, this one teacher who was really Yorkshire got so offended by it, and she kept saying, oh, you sound Cornish. Can't you try harder to sound like we, you know, you should sound in this. You sound like you're from Cornwall. You sound like you're about to like, eat a pasty on stage. But there's nothing that she could do about it because I was so much better at reading than everyone else that I deserved the part. And when I was actually reading out in the final production, I got the perfect Yorkshire accent for the first time. You know, I was really flowing. I was doing out and out and yam and tam and tevera and ah and ah and all the rest of like stupid things people say now then, which is just a weird example of temporal deixis. She didn't have any moral high ground at all on how kids should act and how they should talk. Her son Tom was in my class and he was my friend. Now she was a lovely woman, really. You know, she was a lovely mum, but she was very bro very broad Yorkshire and very blunt and straight down the line. And that can be great, but sometimes it's not the best way to raise your kids. I don't want to say she was a bad mum, but when we did our school carol service, she went up to Tom beforehand and went, If I don't hear you singing, I'll bray you. Bray means beat up, so she was literally saying, I'm going to beat up my eight-year-old son if I don't hear him singing in the carol service. He had a horrible voice. I would have beaten him up if I did hear him singing. He's my friend now. And he never was much of a singer. But I tell you what, his rap mixtape is the only time I've ever heard someone say the N-word in a Yorkshire accent, and I really don't want to have to hear that again. So, finally, this week's recommendations. Firstly, I would recommend not changing t-shirts if you're filming things on different days, but the other one is in the wash, and I don't want to get soaking wet just for the sake of a video. Not that I haven't got soaking wet for the sake of videos before, but those were different sort of videos, you have to pay to see those ones. First recommendation this week is another autistic musician I love, Lady Hawk. You might have heard of her, she had quite a big album a couple of years ago, she does sort of interesting electro pop. Um, she's a great artist and she's said some very interesting stuff over the years about what it's like being autistic touring. As a comedian I can definitely relate to that, a lot of the lights and the noise and the effects that go on on stage can be a bit much sometimes. And she's built her career through sort of powering through it essentially. So I'll put up some interviews with her and some links to her new stuff, it's really fun music. I definitely recommend it if you're into La Rue or that sort of electronic style stuff. God, it's like an old granddad there, that sort of electronic style stuff, even though it's what I listen to. Second recommendation this week is Chris Bonello, who's an author and autism advocate. He wrote a great book called Underdogs, which is a young adult novel, but suitable for anyone with autistic main characters. Definitely check that out. Links to that in the description as well. That's all for this week. Don't forget to check out previous videos in the series, and they're all on the Autism 101 playlist on my channel. I'm going to interview Mark Birkwood, autistic comedian, coming up soon. That's going to be well worth listening to. Check out the interview I did a couple of weeks ago with Aaron Hood. Um, next week is a great one for the amateur comedian. I'm going to be showing you how to get signed in five easy steps. Hint, it helps if you're autistic. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribing in particular really helps boost the channel. And obviously I want to spread the word about autism awareness as far as possible, give it as much possible reach, and make as many people have a good laugh as possible while thinking about these important issues. So I recommend it to your family and friends, your barber, your hairstylist, if you can get a haircut now, your um, COVID-friendly, social distance, local vegan bakery. Um, recommend it everywhere. Check out the other videos. And yeah, see you next week.